everybody. Welcome to Garden Time with Belle. I am here on my front porch getting ready to take you all on another July walkabout. This would be my July walkabout part two. I posted a video to part one just the other day and it featured what was growing in my greenhouse and what is currently growing and doing well in my raised bed veggie herb and cut flower garden. So if you haven't seen walkabout part one for July, I'll link that in the description below. But today it's all about going around the house and showing you different containers and see how they're doing at mid-July. Some shrubs, some trees, and other kinds of annuals and perennials. So that is what today's video is all about. But before I start describing how things are doing and what's growing in my July garden, I want to encourage everybody to please like and subscribe. Uh, subscribing to my channel doesn't cost you anything. It's just click on that little red subscribe button. And that way I can continue to bring more content to gardeners across the U.S. But in particular, I am gardening from mid-Missouri. I am in a zone 6AB and there aren't many mid-Missouri gardeners out there on YouTube. And I thought first of the year, got some encouragement from friends. You know what? Why don't you start your own YouTube channel and uh, talk about what grows in the middle of the country? And so that's what it's all about. So thank you so much. If you've already subscribed, if you have it and you're new to the channel, please click that red subscribe button. So let's get started with the July Walkabout Part 2 tour. And here I am on my front porch, which is a great place for me to hang out, enjoy a cup of coffee, start my day because I am facing west. And so right now it's early morning and it's in the shade. So it's a great place to, to hang out. Uh, we get very warm here in the summers. We get heat, heat indexes over 100, but... We've been blessed the last few days with much cooler temperatures. In fact, I think the high today is only going to be in the low 80s and the humidity levels have gone down. So when that happens in mid-Missouri in the summer, we just embrace those days and make the most of them. So I'm going to start my day with you all by taking you around uh, the property and showing you some things. And then I'm going to get to work in the garden and do a few other projects. So I want to show you my pots on my front porch. This is west facing. This has a pretty big overhang. So my front porch gets shaded almost the entire day. I would say when the sun is way over there late, late in the afternoon, early evening, this porch gets sun maybe two, three hours at the most. And these plants love it here. You can see I've got beautiful dragon wing begonia that does tremendous in this uh, pot, as well as first time growing sweet potato, uh, sweet Caroline potato vine medusa, a really cool new variety with really skinny, skinny leaves. I love this. It's really vigorous like most uh, sweet Caroline potato vines. Um, what I want you to notice too underneath, these are unique stone planters. I can thank Garden. Uh, answer Laura from Garden Answer. Any of you follow her? She is probably probably the most popular YouTuber uh, content creator for gardening. She has been such an inspiration to my gardening. She's given me such confidence and. My credit card statement shows she's also inspired me and influenced me to buy a bunch of things. But when she suggests something, I listen because just it works out. It, it just, you know, her, she's not going to, you know, encourage you to purchase something that doesn't work well. And these unique stone um, concrete planters work perfectly on my front porch. So I'm really happy with how these planters turned out. Super simple application. I don't have a lot out here, um, but I am really happy with these beautiful pots. So it's time for me to grab the camera and I'm going to take you on a July walkabout and show you what is growing around the house. So let's get started. For consistency's sake, I thought I'd start where I typically start my monthly walkabouts, and that is here, walking down the sidewalk uh, towards the front door on the front side of the house. And this is west facing all of this. So let me turn the camera around and show you what's growing. 
Well, here we are coming down the sidewalk to the front door where you just saw me greet you all. And you can see in this obelisk, I have my favorite David Austin Rose, Gertrude Jekyll, and she has taken a rest. She really, in May, was just bursting with gorgeous pink flowers and I'll see if I can get some pictures of how beautiful the flowers are here. She's just taking a rest and I'm not quite sure why because she typically puts out some blooms off and on through the summer. There's another obelisk with her twin Gertrude Jekyll down there. Um, so I'm not quite sure why but um, I tend to use Rose Tone by Espoma fertilizer. It's a granular fertilizer. I probably fertilize these once a month and then I'll stop in September because we don't want them to put on any new growth going into winter. So anyways, that's one of my tasks later today is to get some rose tone on both of these and hopefully they'll flush out. But you know, the plant is super healthy and uh, I continue to, per David Austin's uh, website instruction, I continue to try to train some of the canes in a circular pattern when you're planting in a climber uh, in an obelisk. So of course I've just got some um, evergreen shrubs there. Here's her twin again right now, mid-July, no current blooms, but a healthy looking climbing rose. And then here is my clematis, my Jack Manny, and it's taking a nap. Uh, but if I come in here, the spent blooms, I just think, are super pretty. Aren't they interesting? These little, I don't know, little, I don't know what they look like, but I like them. They're interesting. So I think I'll probably, when things cool off, I'll get another flush of um, blooms from those. Of course, I've got spirea here. Uh, you've seen this before and a couple more evergreens uh, by the front porch where we just were a moment ago. Here is an oh so easy Italian ice little mini shrub rose and it continues blooming off and on throughout the season. Let's just take a look over here and I'll come around and show you. You all were with me when I showed you this new planting. So I had some shrubs here, three of them, and I cannot recall honestly what their names were, but they did not come through winter very well. And I'd had them for like four seasons, three or four seasons. I don't know what happened. So anyhow, North Pole Arborvitae, again, thank you, Laura from Garden Answer. You inspired me to invest in a couple of those. Perfect spot here on this side of the house. I'm holding this spot. Some of you may know that my son is, um, has his own heavy duty uh, hardscape landscaping company. And he promised me for my birthday, or was it Mother's Day, he would plant me a Belinda's Blush Rose, a beautiful rose. It gets about five to six foot tall. It's going to go in here. Uh, however, we've decided we're going to wait and plant it in the spring because actually they've sold out of most of them at the nursery that we like to shop at. So anyhow, so it's looking a little bare here. And if you've been with me any length of time, we do have on the horizon, not not right away, but for sure, one of my big projects is we're going to have this all re-landscape. We're going to pull this uh, concrete out, re-level everything, and create a new pathway much further from the house so I have more planting room. So I can really put in lots of color and flowering perennials and shrubs. Um, I don't know when we're going to do that. Maybe next spring we're going to tackle it. It would be a very big project to pull out concrete and lay, and lay new pathways, but that's what my son does. So he has that expertise. So we're hoping he'll help us out on the project. And here's just uh, a view for you all of uh, part of our front yard. You know, we're on a, a little over 10 acres and this of course doesn't have anything colorful to look at, but it is a little memorial rock garden in honor of our late son. And it's got rocks that we've collected over the years on our big travels out west and other places. And I have a little bird bath, a little solar fountain. It's not very sunny today, so the solar fountain's just kind of, you know, 
spitting, I guess you could say, but we like it. It's a great place to watch the birds come and uh, enjoy a drink. Thought I'd pan over here just so you all can see that we have had uh, some of our property. We have a young man that comes and uh, bales the grass and we just, he just came last week. And so you're going to see some big round bales, bales on the property and he cuts it and he takes it away for his cattle and we're happy for him to do so because of course we are never going to mow all this acreage. This is a Tulip Magnolia Leonard Messel and of course Tulip Magnolia is where we live are a beautiful spring flowering tree uh, so of course uh, no flowers it's too late in the season since it's uh, mid-July but nevertheless it's a pretty little tree and let me take you here you all have seen this before so this is a two foot by 12 foot raised bed box that my husband put on the south side of the house just so i could grow cut flowers it's really for production it's not really for beauty um, and so this year i decided to grow florets seed and uh, i've never grown dahlia from seed so that's what most of this represents are the dahlias i grew from seed and I chose to grow Cancun Girls, which is a complete mix of different dahlias. And so, you know, some are blooming. Let's see if I can get in here for you to see. And the yellow ones, aren't they cheerful? These are dahlias. These haven't bloomed yet, but they have buds. And then down here, I threw in a few of my tubers that I overwintered. I had some extra ones uh, to fit in a spot. So that's what these are. Again, not any blooms except, oh, wait a second. I spoke too soon. There's Jitterbug, one of my all-time favorites. So I've got some dahlias in bloom. You also got to come along with me as I put this support um, twine up because dahlias can get quite top heavy. And you can see, I mean, this dahlia right here from the base to the top, that's at least four and a half feet and they might even get taller. So it's nice to have some support for them. As we make our way down here, remember this is the south side of the house. We, in fact, the south side of our house doesn't have any windows. Uh, so it's not a place that we spend a lot of time, of course, but you know, if you got some space, why not? And these are my oops purchase uh, earlier this summer. And those are yucca plants. And they look like they're finally growing. At least I haven't killed them yet. So there you go. And then as we walk down here, this little narrow bed has gorgeous, well, they quit blooming, but gorgeous Baptisia, lemon meringue, and uh, oh gosh, Per, I'm going to say it wrong, purple sapphire anyways. But even though they're done blooming for the season, they have the most beautiful foliage that I like to use. I cut this when I make floral arrangements. It is a great filler. So any of you that are growing uh, false indigo or baptisia and you think, oh, you know, I've had color for a month. They're gone. They're not going to flower again until next year. If you like to put together arrangements, you've got some beautiful filler there that you can cut and pop in to a flower vase. All right, further down here, you're going to see some peonies. I don't care what I do, where I live, my peonies every single year get powdery mildew. They just do because where I live is so hot and humid. There's plenty of airflow around my peonies, so that is not the reason. But honestly, powdery mildew finds them every year, and it's just part of the deal. But boy, they're magnificent in the spring when they have all those beautiful blooms. In fact, this year, I cut off the blooms in the marsh marshmallow stage, and I have them stored in my fridge, and I can pull those out, and they will open up, and I will have fresh flowers for up to three months. So if you haven't seen the marshmallow trick, marshmallow stage trick of cutting them and putting them in your fridge, I will see if I can link a video um, in the description below to show you how to do that. Here's one of my Miss Molly Budlias, and I just planted her this year. Uh, and she is just like you would expect, doing tremendous. And uh, 
don't see any butterflies on her now, but they usually swarm her. I've got some rusted Russian sage right here. And these were popped in here because I had to relocate them because they were being gobbled up up there underneath my baptisia. So, you know, they're starting to take hold. There are some pretty silver blue flowers on top. Again, not very pretty peonies. Look at that, the spots, but it is what it is. And then let's take a look right down here. See if I can keep my shadow out since the sun is finally coming out this morning. So you're going to see one of my favorite summer annuals, and that would be called Supertunia bubblegum from Proven Winners. <laughs> These just got placed here, I don't know, maybe two days ago. So they're not looking spectacular, but... I have high hopes. I am not giving up on these because I pulled them out of my challenging garden bed way over here. I had them there. It's far too wet here. I don't think it gets enough sun for these bubble gums. So I pulled them out and I've relocated four of them and two of them have ended up here. Again, even though this is facing technically east this right here um, it's far enough away from the house that it gets loads and loads of sun throughout the day so my hope is my bubble gums will fill in this point this was spiderwort let me see i can pull in here really close and show you how gorgeous the flowers are you see that beautiful purple blue flower Spiderwort is really at its best in the cooler months, so spring and early summer. It's pretty much done, so I actually cut it way back, probably by two-thirds, cut all the spent blooms back, and that gave me sun and space to pop in these Supertunia uh, bubblegum. They are the Vista series, get really vigorous, so I'm hoping they'll take on uh, in this spot. I wanted to mention something else about uh, the fact that here it is mid-July and I have relocated some annuals and you might think, oh my gosh, it's so late in the year, can you be doing that? And actually where I live, I can do that because in mid-Missouri zone 6AB, we have a long growing season. Uh, it will not frost or freeze here until mid-October, so that gives me three months for these Supertunia Vista bubblegums to root in and really fill in this space. So I'm hopeful that they're going to do just fine here, and I've got plenty of weeks left uh, to enjoy their flowers. So fingers crossed uh, it'll work out. You can see uh, I've got a bank of different varieties of hosta. Uh, you can see some are a little crispy, so I need to get in here and do some pruning. Uh, even though this is technically facing east, that's south. And as you can see, the further we get away from the house, the more sun. And so these are a little crispy. You can also see that they have their beautiful flower stalks. And they're just about done. So all of these petals have fallen off. I happen to like the flowers on hostas. And so I'll let them do their thing. And then I'll come in uh, probably in the next two or three days and cut the rest of those flower stalks off because they really serve their purpose. In fact, you can see because of the different varieties, they're in different stages. So look at those flowers, right? Those are still doing pretty see well see how fresh that flower looks then these are not so fresh and look at these Woo! and that's because they're all different varieties of hostas and they flower at different times so it's time to go to this section of the property uh, those of you who have been following me you know that I am trying to grow some branching sunflowers shock a lot variety on either end of my grape arbor and so let me give you an update. So here they are on the south, north end of my grape arbor. So this one's not doing too bad. I'd say that's almost four feet tall. This one's doing okay. That one's not doing so great. I've got them in cages to prevent critters from eating them. And believe it or not, <laughs> this is one. I grew some, uh, tried to grow some more seeds because this one got eaten by a bunny. So we've got cages to um, protect them from wildlife. 
they're doing okay, but wait until you see what a difference these on this end, because this is a southern exposure. I can't believe the difference, but it's pretty incredible. I mean, check out these. Look at these. They are much more um, leafed up. Uh, they're about the same height as the ones down here on the north end of the grape arbor, but they just look so much better. Again, at some point I'll remove the cages, but for now, they're doing their job. Now, here's one that bit the dust, got eaten by a bunny several weeks ago. And I threw in some more seed, but the seed did not germinate, but that's okay. These are supposed to get like, I don't know, five foot tall, the chocolate variety, and they're branching sunflowers. And of course, they don't really do anything until late summer, early fall. So I am hoping that they will add a bit of color and beauty to this space Woo! in the yard. I thought I'd give you a little update. Here I am up on the open porch on the back side of the house, which faces east. And you were along with me when I was planting up all my pots earlier in the season with coleus. And this electric lime, oh, so darn pretty very very happy with how it's done not so happy with my sun patience that i bought check this one out <laughs> what in the world i just i don't get it have any of you you know you buy something you buy three plants and one of them just doesn't perform and just dies this is the best of the three and it's still got no flowers on it but it had them i'll see if i can pull up um a photograph i had these three sun patients inside on our covered porch right here and they were absolutely spectacular for the first month and then they started to go downhill. <laughs> in fact, when I came out one day and that one was dead, I was like, what? And I couldn't believe it. I was online looking at, of course, gardening stuff. And someone else in a gardening forum said the same thing. She posted, she had three sun patients, tropical, I can't remember the name. I'll have to look it up for you. Tropical something. And she had three, just like me, in three different pots, same sun, same watering schedule, and one fail. So, go figure. I would be remiss if I didn't feature these two hanging baskets. Okay, you know what those are, I bet, because you know my favorite flowering annual from Proven Winners is the Super Tunia Petunia series, and these would be the Super Tunia Vista Paradise, and that is only one plant. So for six dollars, I put a plant in here in mid May, and here it is two months later. And if you look at this one up close, let me see if I can, you can't even see the pot anymore. That's how vigorous these are. Oh. I was going to see if I could get the Hummers in for you. We had an Oriole come the other day, which we rarely do. And my husband uh, was trying to coax them back. Oh, there they are. By uh, putting an orange up there. But unfortunately, we've not seen another Oriole since. Darn it. So now that I've come down the steps it's time to take a look over here at my work in progress bed i've taken you along several times and shown you what i've been trying to accomplish here and i'm having i would say mixed results uh first i want to show you another pot this pot had a bit of a challenge this is another amazing aqua pot light uh, you see here where you uh, put the water in. Well, in my excitement of 
planting up this pot earlier in the year, I did not open up the hole below. You have, there's a plug for drainage and you still need drainage even with the aquapot lights and I forgot to do that. And so we've had so much rain that I came out here, oh, I don't know, two weeks ago or so after so much rain and this soil was soaking wet. I mean, it was like water was floating. And oh, my poor geraniums that I grew from seed, the maverick geraniums, this is coral. The white ones aren't blooming right now. I pulled out all the plants. We dumped out the water. We opened up the drainage hole below and um, I'm trying to get them to come back. And so, so in the center, I had some gara, which you know how much I love gara. If we, I don't know, I can't really zoom in, but if you look at my greenhouse aqua pots, I've got that beautiful wispy gara in the center of both of the big pots. I had a gara in here and when it flooded out, it rotted, it did not survive. So I pulled the garo out and I put in, of course, purple fountain grass. If you've never grown purple fountain grass, know that it's vigorous, it grows and it wants to take over. But I grew this same grass in here last year with some annuals surrounding the outside that spilled over the edge and it was magnificent. It just did great. Check this out. <laughs> this is my pot that I took you along when I potted this up in May. Oh my gosh, check out that coleus. I'm going to see if I can turn the camera around so you can see how massive. This is only three plants in this pot and I have it on drip irrigation and it's loving life. I mean, sometimes it's really hard to show everybody the scale of plants, but this is three plants, three coleus in this pot. Wow, wow, wow. Couldn't be happier. Isn't that just beautiful? Here is my work in progress bed. This uh, flower bed faces east. It gets about six hours of sun. I've got some beautiful salvia. These are annuals. I've got some celosia that I grew from seed this year. And I've got some coleus over here under cloches so the bunnies don't keep eating those little starts got a hosta and uh, of course I've got my Miss Molly Budlia but what I'm delighted to share is what's doing fine here are these limelight prime hydrangeas. I was really really worried that because it's so wet this bed that it might kill them and I just planted these in late, late April um, and they're already blooming so I mean gosh Check that out. So I think they're going to be fine. Um, I have found some yellowing leaves in the interior a little bit. And that kind of concerned me at first because this was sort of an investment to get three of these. And what I discovered in reading on the Proven Winners site is that actually not to be too concerned about yellowing leaves in the center of your limelight prime hydrangeas that's really common in their first year a lot of times um, i've also read that when they are putting on flowers for the first time as you can imagine the plant is using all its energy to produce flowers and so therefore it's not putting as much energy into worrying too much about the foliage and so so a little bit of leaf drop is okay. So I'm going to continue to monitor these and uh, hope that they grow up to their five to six foot tall and wide potential and fill in the back of this border beautifully. You might spy some more hydrangeas, but this is a different variety. So let me take you around the corner here and show you what that's doing. So as we round the corner here, you might notice or remember this is a cat mint nepeta. I pulled it from over there when it was getting gobbled up and I popped those in here about a month or so ago and they're doing okay. They're flushing out again. They have a big flush in early summer and then if you cut them back, they'll reflush blooms 
and I actually haven't cut them back, but they're, they're doing their thing. But look at my limelight punch, little lime punch. Oh my goodness. All right, you all, this is their, this is their second or third year. Oh my goodness. I don't know, but proven winners. I mean, you know what you're doing. Look at these gorgeous flowers on this shrub. Little Lime Punch are known for coming out first chartreuse, then they come and turn into a creamy white, and then the pink starts to show, and then when things cool off and it gets closer to fall, they will turn a deep pinky red punch color. And I could not be more delighted with their performance. They just love it here on this point. In between, you see, I put some more mini vistas from Proven Winners. Indigo, the Supertunia Mini Vista Yellow. There's another Indigo. There's some Brunnera. My Coleus, little tiny Coleus are not little and tiny anymore. Aren't they lovely? They're doing great in this border. And then uh, I had some um, that I made from cuttings. This is that electric lime. You saw these in the pots up on my porch. Uh, I cut some starch from them. And so I thought, well, I've got some open space here. I'll try to pop in some and see what they do. Okay, we're almost finished. Here is the beautiful copperhead coleus. Love and life. Absolutely delightful. So on this final tier, this is the north side of the house. We've got four different hostas and in the center of the hostas, we can take a look at Mr. Mikawa. He is a dwarf Japanese maple. His specs say that he will eventually get eight foot tall and about five to six feet wide. And the idea is he'll fill in this space and then all the hostas and things below will uh, set him off beautifully. Of course, I've got a repeat of the Supertunia Mini Vista Indigo Yellow Indigo, and <laughs> you're going to see my little bubble gums that I tried to replace. I just popped those in a day or two ago. They're on the struggle bus, but they were before I pulled them from that other bed, and uh, I don't know what's going to happen with them, but you know, I just have such great faith that. <laughs> It's like the little engine that could. I'm still encouraging them and watering them and I'm gonna fertilize them and see what happens. And last but not least up by the house is, uh, are the two uh, self-watering containers that I mentioned earlier that flank our garage. And again, my favorite beautiful coleus. This is a proven winner's variety. I can't recall. I think I'll put the name on the screen if I can figure it out. And the double up begonias in front. This one worked great. Look at the double up in that. But look over here. Oh my goodness. I don't know what happened. Let's go to this one. It's just on the struggle bus a little bit, but it's still alive. So there you go. Last stop on the July tour is the Monarch Pollinator Habitat. I jumped on my scooter, so we'll zip up here and I'll show you what is currently blooming in this space in mid to late July. It looks a lot different than it did a month ago, that's for darn sure. of coneflower growing, a variety of rudbeckia right now, and we still have some varieties of coreopsis. Back in May, it was an absolute sea of coreopsis, a whole different variety than what I'm showing you here. 
And then if we get in here a little ways, I'm trying to keep my shadow out. You can see these tall spikes. This is a variety of um, milkweed. I believe we have four varieties of milkweed growing uh, in the garden and uh, the common milkweed and then other kinds of milkweed. So let's see, uh, we had a lot of Monarda uh, recently. Um, and of course here you see some more Coreopsis. Uh, what you see now that doesn't look so great was the beautiful white yarrow I showed you. These were all just beautiful, bursting with white all over the two acres when the uh, initial Coreopsis was in bloom. And they were just lovely. Here's another variety of milkweed. Those of you who are native uh, plant growers, if you know what this is, let me know. But I do know it's milkweed, I just don't know the variety. So let me see if I can find any of the uh, Monarda. I don't know if we'll have any left, the beautiful purple Monarda. I think I saw some Liatris. Uh, so let's see what we can find. I hope I mentioned that this is our third year for our pollinator habitat and uh, it just will continue to get better and better. But here is, I believe this is a form of Liatris. I would love to see a lot more of those beauties growing in this habitat. So of course, just like in nature, things come in waves. You've got your spring flowers, your early summer, midsummer, and late summer. And right now, we're just at the very tail end of the beautiful Monarda. That's not looking so great, that purple flower in the middle, but I should have been out here two or three weeks ago because there were Monarda, there was Monarda everywhere. Well, the sun has come out on this beautiful morning in the garden and it is warming up. So I have parked my little scooter here in the shade of a beautiful tree next to our pond to wrap up our time together today. Thank you so much for hanging out with me as you got to see what's growing in my mid-Missouri zone six garden. We got to take a look at some trees and shrubs and perennials and annuals that I've got growing around the house. And I took you along with me through our two acre pollinator patch. And we got to see how it is transforming and changing with the season, which, you know, makes me super excited and happy. It is loaded with all kinds of pollinators from bees to lots of dragonflies since we have the pond and they love living here. Haven't seen too many monarchs this year. In fact, a good friend of mine, her son's a biologist and he shared with his mother that the monarch population down in Mexico was half of what it was the year before. So not a lot of monarchs to report in my neck of the woods, but I can't thank you all enough for joining me and supporting my channel by liking and subscribing. And until next time, happy gardening. Thank you.